Hello and welcome to Gaelic Football Views on wearecabin.com. On tonight's show we'll be bringing you all the results from the weekend including the Under-21 Championship and Templeport's Ulster Semi-Final. So we're going to start off with the DT1 Under-21 Division 2 Football Championship. Um, the quarterfinals that were taking place on the weekend. Bally Hayes were taking on Bally McHugh and uh, Bally Hayes won this one scoring two goals and seven points to Bally McHugh's Eight points, David. Yeah, low enough scoring game. Uh, only uh, 17 scores in total. Big loss for Bally McHugh, the big man Buchanan, um, after getting the red card in the previous game. So he probably would have made the difference, you'd imagine, in a game like that. Somebody of his, of his physicality and experience and ability was uh, was probably worth five or six points in that game. But Bally has march on now into the semi-final. Indeed. In the next game saw Lara taking on Corner Fane and Lara coming away with a huge win here, two goals and 17 points to Corner Fane's one goal and six, but Lara will be making great strides at underage levels and it's really culminating in this under-21 team. Yeah, well the under-21 team in Lara is the team that made the minor A final a few years, three years back. Um, I think they were beaten by... Um, it was a Castle Rahan Lavi amalgamation. So in, in that final, it, it, it is a very, very good Lara team. Mm -hmm. I know from first experience, we played them in a challenge match last week and they've, they've some wonderful footballers and uh, real good speed in the team. So they're going to have a lot to say in the outcome of this Under-21 Championship. So they lost the minor A Championship final. Yeah. And are playing Division 2 and Under-21. That's uh, they'd be very strong then for, for this division. Yeah, yeah, although as we'll see from the other results, there's, there's, so. there's a couple of teams actually, one more result and we'll go on to that next result. Killigarry were taking on Bell Torbett and Killigarry won this 5-18 to 10 points. Killigarry, another very strong team at this Division 2 on the 21 grade and probably the third team that I'd be considering would be strong is Eastern Gales, uh, yeah. the Baileyborough and uh, Knockbride amalgamation. Mm -hmm. They have the two argues and um, Reese Clark, the county minor as Can't well. Argue with that. Can't argue with that. But a big win for Killy Gary there, um, who w were without the services of Dara Gannon as well. So they have uh, they have more players to come back yet. So Killy Gary um, will be happy with their victory and they'll be looking forward to their semi final. We'll, we'll we have the semi final draw later on in the show. We can tell you who's playing who at that point. And in the DT1 Under-21 Division 1 Football Championship quarterfinals played on the weekend as well. Rammer took on Calvin Gales. Rammer winning this one in the score leader, two goals and 12. To Calvin Gales, one goal and 10. A five-point victory there for Rammer. Um, yeah. Uh, Blustery conditions. Oh, horrible conditions, absolutely horrible conditions. Uh, we were broadcasting this one on wearecavin.com and uh, the, the first half, Rammer played with the win. They got their two goals in the first half and they led by 10 points at half time. Now, the uh, Cavan Gales came out, got a goal and two or three points straight away and, and looked like they were going to uh, going to win the game with 20 minutes to go. There was, there was only two or three points in it and you'd have imagined at that stage that Cavan Gales would have been able to push on, but they, uh, they didn't manage to do so. Rammer got into the flow and, and just stemmed the tide enough in the second half to, to uh, stop Cavan Gales from getting enough scores. Like the uh, Vinnie Coyle was exceptional. He was he was absolutely brilliant for Cavan Gales. Um, I think he's, he must have scored six or seven points in total. He had a very very good game. Um, they 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 had a good real tight marker in on Andy Graham. They'd done a very good job. Rammer United. So he was their main scorer in the previous games. But for Rammer United. Um, Connor Bradley was absolutely excellent. Yeah. He, he was on Barry Fortune, and he uh, he had the better of Fortune. He was he was really really good, and, and he's one to watch a county minor from last year. In fact, I think he could have been captain of the county minors. Um, was Owens, he a joint captain or something like that. Yeah, was possibly. It? Yeah, but uh, Owen Somerville had another had a very good game as well, and then Liam Brady, the goalkeeper, he came up three or four times, threatened to take freeze and went back down. So he did. It was it was funny to watch. But it's a very young Rammer team actually. Looking at it, or I I would say the vast majority of the team is underage again next year and maybe the year after even. But. Uh, Bodes well for Rally United over the next couple of years, definitely. But the, the next game saw Rally Gales taking on Southern Gales in uh, Keesman Breffney on the 3G pitch yesterday evening. We were at this game, Damien, and it finished. Rally Gales 14 points, Southern Gales a goal and nine. 
um, full of incident, full of every. This game had everything basically mm. sorted. Um, and it Yellow it cards, black like cards, that. red cards, points, goals. Yeah. Well, goal. It had audience participation as well. Audience participation. It had. It had. It had a few, uh, people came in from the sideline. It was a bit of a schmozzle just before half, half time. It was horrible to see. There was a lot of there was mm. a lot of people involved in it, and f it wasn't that they were coming in to, to try and pull people out. They were coming in no. to throw boxes and they yeah. were coming in from the sideline and coming in, and it wasn't nice uh, to see. It has to be said. Three players got sent off. Uh, or after that, um, Mickey Lee, the referee. As a result of the incident, as a result yeah. Of the incident, Mickey Lee sending off three players, two from O'Reilly Gales and one from Southern Gales. And one from O'Reilly Gales from the sideline as well was sent off as well, which was was, was good to see that the referee dealt with the incident. Yeah, like he couldn't do anything about what happened. It was it, there was a lot of people involved. He waited. He went to one set of umpires. After speaking with them, he dealt with a couple of players the person on the sideline as well. Mm. Then went to his other set of umpires and then came back down and dealt with a couple more players as yeah. well. Like So, you know, he took his time, he got the decisions right. Yeah. He, he, now, had people seen more, he probably could have sent off more. But, yeah. he did. but there's only so much you can there's see. so much you can see. Yeah. Um, you know, you can see it all happening, but you can't see who's throwing yeah. and stuff like that. But That's then, it. Look, it was a good battle at the same time. It was like, in, in, at stages, there was, you know, the threatened like there was going to be a game of football would break. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was some good performances. Southern Gales very unlucky towards the end. They really went for the jugular against the wind. And it was funny, O'Reilly Gales playing against the wind in the first half m played the better football. And mm. Southern Gales playing against the wind in the second half probably played a little bit of better football. But there was a couple of standout performances. Sean Burke was yeah. absolutely outstanding. I think he scored six points in the second half alone. He was phenomenal. County Minor panellist this year um, had an excellent game. Again, the man we keep talking about, Peter Corrigan, yeah. had another very good game. Park Faulkner was in the middle of the field with Corrigan, had a very good game. Um, Niall Clerken at centre half forward um, probably hit four or five points mm -hmm. as well. Like between him and Burke, I'd say that was all the scorers really <coughs> for O'Reilly Gales. So they were they were very good. Um, O'Reilly Gales will be they'll be hard bed in this competition. Like they're they're a physically strong team, yeah. big men, and have some very very good footballers, especially up in the forward line there between Burke and the, the two Clerkins. Now Harper is going to be a loss. He got a no, it wasn't Harper. Who was it that was sent off? We, we thought it was sorry, Harper. we thought it was Harper. It was, it was actually uh, one of the Clerkins. It was, it was Ryan Clerken. Ryan Clerken, yeah. yeah. That was because all the numbers were wrong on the program that we got for the players that were playing, um, and we thought it was David Harper who'd been sent off. That's but it right. Was actually, Ryan Clerken. That's right. Um, so he got the red card. But yeah, it uh, it, it look at O'Reilly Gales were deserving of their victory. Mm. Um, you know, there was a few good performances from Southern Gales' point of view. Connor Madden, I thought, was excellent. Yeah. Um, Tried as hard as from start to finish. And Thomas Galligan, a few very good moments in the game, yeah, but not consistent. Like see, not mm. as much as I'd like to see from Thomas Gallagher. We know that the type of player he is, and you know that he can influence a game, but he didn't get a chance to influence. I suppose, look, he was up against Peter Corrigan and up against um, Paul Falk Falk in the middle of the field. Yeah, you know, like, so. that's it. There was a lot. There was a lot to. Um, Paul Leddy was playing very well before he got the red card. Yeah. Um, his use of the ball was excellent, and he looks like he's got a bit leaner, he looks like he's sharper. Mm -hmm. um, whatever work he's doing at the minute, it's 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 working in his advantage like because going, there's a little bit more he could do as well probably do oh, yeah, yeah. leaner and get that's it, but he's he's, he's definitely doing it. Talent. Yeah, he is indeed. And um I think Luke Moyna had a, a fairly good game as well. But O'Reilly Gales now they'll be looking forward to their semi final and the, the draws for the semi finals took place. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. It was before you interrupted. <laughs> Damn it, Mickey. Um, but yeah, the draws for the semi finals took place at half time in that game. And the Division 1 semi final see Ramor taking on O'Rahilly Gales and Asan Gales taking on Castle Rahan. So they'll uh, all. Both semi-finals will be this coming weekend on the 3G pitch with the with the date and time to be fixed tonight. Uh, Damien, just looking at those semi-finals, you of course are over at San Gales um, and you are up against Castle Rahan. Mm. Um, did you get to see the Castle Rahan game? The I did, I did. i seen them against St. Joe's and, and very impressed. Um, Cormac Daly was excellent. Um, I thought 
the substitute that came on for them, I think it was Garrett Riley, um, scored two goals. Now he went off again, so I, I wonder has he an injury or is there something that's if you know hampering him? Uh, please, let do. us know. Please, yeah, we'd, we'd yeah, like to know our home. <laughs> it's, uh, but yeah, I, Cormac Daly, Fergal Riley was excellent. Yeah. Absolutely, he he pulled all the strings for Castle and, and he's uh, he, he's going to he, he does a man marking job on. Whoever he's, you know, he will do a man marking job, but then he can influence the game while doing a man marking job, which isn't an easy thing to do. But he has the ability to do that. So they're they're going to be very very hard bet, as I said earlier on in the show, how Castle Rahan, along with Lavi, won the minor A. Uh, title three years ago yeah. with this team, so a lot of those uh, Castle Rahan boys will know the the Lavi lads well anyway. So a good few of them probably went to school or go in Virginia with each other. So they'll they'll know each other very very well. That they're not still together. Do you know like that Lavi mm. have gone from being an amalgamation with Castle Rahan three years ago to now being an amalgamation with. That's right. Uh, five years or six years ago, they they started this as an under twenty one, and they've had wonderful success in it. I think they've won two or three. They've won three in five years. You know, they, they, it's really been a, a, a very fruitful amalgamation for the three clubs, and uh, you know, it seems to be paying dividend because a lot of the footballers coming through have the confidence of winning these under twenty one. So there's uh, like there's a lot of the players currently playing with Asan Gays that have two medals already in their back pocket so they'd be looking for a tour but they won't have it easy it's going to be a tough battle against Castle Rahan That's for sure. the second division division two semi-final sees neighbours Killigarry taking on Lara and Bally Hayes have the task of beating Eastern Gales which is uh, not going to be an easy task no but the Mount Water and Ties Killigarry and Lara that's 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 a huge one because they would be two of the stronger teams in this division and uh, you know and two very attacking yeah, teams yeah. extremely yeah. open attacking football would be played and the 3G pitch, although conditions are terrible lately with, with rain and wind, the 3G pitch makes a fast game and these are two fast teams. So it's going to be, a, it, that'll be an excellent game. I, I, I'll definitely... Can you just imagine these games being played at this time of the year on a grass pitch nah. down, you know, down in Muller or down... Wherever the case may be. Know, or heavy like heavy field wouldn't just suit. Wouldn't, like, it's, it's a great facility to have that 3G mm. pitch there at this time of the year to play this under 20 yeah. Because the games are, are, are still 10 times better than they would be if they were on a grass pitch yeah. at this time of yeah. the year. Like, definitely. You know. The speed of the game is, is it's a joy to watch yeah. in fairness. And Some of the scores last night, I have to say, uh, yeah. were absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, young... Um, uh, L L Lino's, Lino's, Greg Lino's. Greg, L Greg Lino's, uh, got a couple of scores on his left foot in the first half for Southern Gales. Just thinking back to it, and then in the second half, you had um, Peter Corrigan got a couple of great scores. But there was someone for for O'Reilly Gales got one a monster score from from outside the forty five down to on the right. That was work. Was that it was Burke? Yeah, Burke. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Monster. You're not going to do that on, 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 a, on a regular pitch at this time. No, yeah. no, so you wouldn't. So. Wait, get out and watch these games because they are pretty good to watch. Yeah. yeah, and there's only, what, there's four semi finals and two finals, only six games left in this competition. So we will be bringing you, if, uh, if the scheduling works, we'll be bringing you live commentary of those semi finals on wearecavan.com on the Listen Live stream. So, uh, Look at stay tune in if you can't get in, but if you can get in, do because it's a uh, great football to watch. Exactly. Moving on to the Ulster Junior Championship semi final, which took place in Brewster Park yesterday. Templeport were taking on the Derry champions, Fahan Vale, and unfortunately, they came out on the wrong side of the result. It finished 1 9 to 2 11 in favour of Fahan Vale. So, disappointing result. Yeah, disappointing result. Like Templeport, they had the lion's share of possession throughout mm. the whole game, so that it, it was just their their use of possession was 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 what let them down. They they made too many mistakes and they took the wrong options. They weren't economical in front of goal. Fawn Vale very rarely gave the ball away. Okay, then they kicked the ball across the sideline six or seven times because the ball just bounced nice. off the grass <laughs> and whatever. But that happened with, with Templeport all, all too often. Fawn Vale. As soon as they got the ball into the forward line, you had Kevin Martin one side, Eunan Murray the other, and Joe Gray at centre half forward, mm. the player manager. And they just, like, I think the, it was a two wides they had for the whole game. Yeah. Two wides for yeah. the whole game yeah. at junior level. You know, and just, they always kept the ball and they always got their shots off. And, and, and when you've got two inside forwards like Eunan Murray and, and, and Kevin Martin, Martin, 
you're not going to, you, you know, you're, they're, they're excellent. And that, we were speaking about them on the way down the road to the game and, yeah. and their form has been consistent throughout the championship. The two corner forwards are their highest scorers all the way through the championship. So, they're, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was a joy to watch them in fairness. Mm. I have to say, like... Some of the scores they put up. Like, Devine, Michael Devine was doing a very good man-marking job and yet his man still scored 1-1 one, one or 1-2. One, like, yeah. you know, it, it, and he, he pulled out two or three blocks as well on top of that and turnovers like it it must have been just horrible Michael Devine started on Newton Murray down to our right hand side and we were saying God Kevin Martin was getting way too much space and within right. 10 or 15 minutes in fairness to Fintan Riley he switched Michael Devine over on to Kevin Martin that's right and Kevin Martin was quiet for many for long periods then and then the second the half the second half at times he just <laughs> Popped he, up he exploded into the game in the second half. He scored one two in in that second half. So like he, phenomenal talent. But uh, like a young young guy as well. I saw him coming out of the dressing room, and I'd say he's no more. He's I wouldn't say he's twenty years of age yet. Right, right. You know, what a fantastic talent. Like yeah, that. it's a very strong junior team that Fahan Vale. And and speaking to the Monaghan reporters with Northern Stown, Newdy Hughes and Alan Gunn, they. Rock Curry got it to the final on the other side, but they think that Fahanville were too strong of a team for uh, for for Rock Curry. So it'll be interesting to see will they go on and win out that Ulster title. Yeah, because it's funny because Templeport, like they did, like they, they, I spoke to Fintan Riley after the game, and he said, you know, like the. They did have the lion's share of possession, but it was their use of possession. He says, things that we worked on all year, like there was lads shooting from the corner flag mm. out there today and, and just doing the wrong things that they, he said, like, that we've worked on not to do, you know, and it, it just, you know, the, the, the game plan seemed to go out the window a little bit, which is disappointing because you could see that Fawn Vale just played to their, uh, their game, plan, game plan their system and their system mm. and nobody ever ventured away from it you know like and, and, and it just goes to show you that you know sometimes players just need to listen and go with a plan and, 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 and like if you can kick two wides in a game you're going to if you can only kick two wides in a game you're going to yeah. win most games yeah you that's it I mean? provided you create enough that's chances it. that's it like you know that's it so it always could have Templeport could have won that game yeah and it, it, it again like like a lot of Cavan teams it, it could be coulda, looking shoulda. back, coulda, woulda, shoulda, exactly. But look at all in all, Templeport have had a very oh, good man, season, yeah, yeah. and it's a young team. I'd say Templeport, that same team in two or three years' time, would be way, way better than Fahan Vale because there is so much room to grow with Templeport. Yeah, and and it. it's look at the, the sky's the limit with Templeport. They have, it, you know. It, Ambition is the only thing that can maybe stop them. Their own ambition, if yeah. they don't or want it or, or don't work hard enough. But they, they have the talented footballers, Liam Galligan and Ben Kiernan and Benjamin Kelly and Owen and Doonan. Owen and Doonan, and Michael Devine, Sean Doonan there. Even Sean like you Dolan, could yeah. All, like you, could, you could just go through. Like there, there, there's not too many of them over the 30 mark. Like there's maybe four, I'd say, that started that would be over the 30 mark. Well, yeah, maybe there Lassa is. Morgan Rath had an amazing game for And he'd still be on the 30. You know? Donald Maguire. Donald Maguire would be around the 30. Around the 30 mark. So, like, there's a, there's a lot of them. So the, you know, the vast majority of that team is underage, is, is a young, young team. So they'll, uh, they, they'll have a big impact, I'm sure, next year in the Intermediate Championship. Yeah, so the. Uh, Lorgan Ladies minor team were out in the Ulster quarter final. This game was played in Mahara on, I think it was Saturday afternoon, and they came away with a massive victory here. It was Lorgan Ladies, two goals and 16. I had Drumsey. I had Drumsey? Yeah, I had Drumsey. Yeah. Uh, four points. So it was a, a, a very convincing win there. 22 points to four in favour of Lorgan Ladies. Their own champions, are they? No, for Mana. For Mana. Yeah, they're from Fermanagh, so that was a big win, so that sees them march on into the semi-final. I'm not sure exactly when that semi-final is, but we'll try and keep an eye on it mm-hmm. in the coming weeks. Uh, so, the Sheridan Insurance 2015 <coughs> Breffney All-Stars Awards will be uh, handed out on Friday, November the 20th in the Hotel Kilmore. That's this Friday night, I believe. That's right. The MC on the night is Northern Sounds, Sean McCaffrey, and he'll be ably assisted by myself and yourself. Well, I wouldn't say assisted, I'd say more stumble. He'll, he'll be stumbling across. Be, so he will, he'll be or maybe he'll be hampered by. Hampered by. Ably <laughs> hampered by. Your, yours truly. Um, on, the, on the night, the senior, the intermediate, the junior, and the minor players of the year will be revealed, as well as the manager and the referee. Um, 
of the year and the hurler of the year as well. Right, so yeah. good to see. If you want to get tickets, um, you can get them from Liam McCabe in Breffney Park. I think there are still some available. They're priced at 50 euro, I believe, but it's um, it's it's going to be a great night's nice entertainment. There's live music, um, drinks reception, and uh, there'll be a bit of fun and banter. And uh, yeah. I'm just talking to... Damien is signing autographs as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, that's expensive, that. <laughs> Bring your cash. <laughs> gonna need that. But yeah, it's gonna be very, very good. Taking sitting on his knee. There's some great. Uh, there's there's also going to be a, a presentation to Paul Brady on his right. wonderful achievement in handball again this year. It's five in a row. An awful lot of people didn't manage to do five in a row. Kilkenny didn't manage to do five in a row. Kerry didn't manage to do five in a row. And um, the man with the cap who wanted to play in Crow Park. Your friend Gal Brooks, he couldn't even do five He in couldn't row, do, so but no. Paul Brady could. Paul Brady could do five. In a row. He could indeed. The Cavan Ladies Celebration Night will take place on November the 28th at 8 p.m. in Crover House Hotel. Uh, special guests on the night are the 2015 under 14 Lady uh, or Girls All Ireland winners. The tickets are 20 euro and are available from any member of the county board. Ladies County Board. Ladies County Board. So it should be an excellent nice crack again. Again, being emceed by <laughs> your truly to Mickey and Damien so it should be good nights fun um, and good it'll be great to have an All-Ireland Cup at a, at a dinner dance it will absolutely yeah well last year there was one as well the Junior All-Ireland uh, was sitting on the, the that's right the, yeah. for the men's and, and this year we have the under 14 uh, All-Ireland ladies but we're doing MC at that one as well yeah yeah. Well, they couldn't get anybody else. They did try they did. everybody. They did. They did. You know, they tried Anton Deck. They did. They weren't they tried, there. Um, uh, Podge and Rodge. Podge and Rodge. <laughs> they tried. Uh, Elvin and Louise. Elvin and Louise weren't up for it at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Ray and JP. I'm just that's thinking it. of any other ones. Yeah, I can't think of too many. Uh, Dermot and Dave. Dermot and Dave. Weren't available. <laughs> yeah, but. Monica and Chandler. Monica and Chandler. Yeah, well, thank God. But they, 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 they did get us in the Man. end. Get off yeah. The, uh, yeah, at the end of a very long list. So it should be a good nice crack. And as I say, the, the tickets for that are only 20 euro. It, it should be a really, really good nice crack. Um, very good value in the tickets there. So, you know, get on to the county board members there. More jokes like the ones we made there this evening. There'll be plenty of them floating around the Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but still, buy it anyway. <laughs> buy the tickets anyway. Go to the event. It should be very good. We've had a very, very short show this week. We have, yeah, God. Um, it only, it's a record. I think it was only two and a half hours this week so yeah, it must be yeah. A record, so. it's an absolute Look, that, record it's not over yet that brings us to the end of this week's show remember if you want to get in contact with the show we'd be delighted to hear from you uh, you can email us at gaelicfootballviews at gmail.com or you can get us at uh, we are calvin at gmail.com as well indeed yeah we are Cavan, or you can follow us on Twitter at Gaelic FV or at We Are Cavan, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Gaelic Football Views or We Are Cavan. Mm -hmm. So um, be sure to tune in to Louise O'Reilly's All About Sport. It's on Wednesday night, and it's also uh, you can watch it back on the We Are Cavan website on the TV show section. Uh, we're delighted to have Louise on board. Not too sure who she's got in with her this week, but no doubt it's another top class guest as. It always, as it always is she had um, I can't think of her name from the Lacking Ladies in last week it was a great show absolutely great show so make sure and tune in to Louise O'Reilly's and check out the McAvoy Super Value podcast on the podcast section of the website where Michael Hannan and myself were discussing Porrick Duffy's um, proposals for change in the GEA quite an interesting podcast and uh, it, it's on the podcast section of the website Excellent, excellent. So you just go into the podcast office and you'll find that. So, look, I suppose that probably brings us to the end of the show, as we've already said. And so, until next week, it's God bless and good night.